contractor looking to stabilize or expand your sales in real estate, property management, or construction? Or are you already selling odor removal services and struggling to find a product that seals when removal falls short? Meet VaporLock from EnviroGuard. Traditional odor removal methods can take hours, sometimes even days, causing you to spend more time on one job and missing other revenue opportunity. VaporLock seals in odor permanently and won't come back even when surfaces expand in the summer. Just simply spray, allow to dry, and walk away. VaporLock comes in white and clear. White seals, primes, and covers charring and alligatoring in one step. Clear preserves the original look of the structural surface or top coats painted surfaces. If you're ready to begin your odor sealing service today or to learn more about how you can add VaporLock to your existing services, call EnviroGuard today at 828-548-3900. Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's Friday live stream. Today we are going to be talking about everything odor sealing, okay? And we're going to be going through a lot of detail and if you're, you know, participating in the stream, feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, we're going to take it step by step and we're going to parse out a lot of detail today between the different types of um, sealing needs that you may run into in the field, whether we're talking about fire damage or whether we're uh, talking about an affected subfloor from, you know, pet urine and things of that nature and kind of everything in between. It could even be walls that are perfectly fine to the naked eye, um, but because there was, you know, smoke or smoking odor or cooking odors or what have you, um, how to deal with all those situations. And we'll go through this slowly. Um, and if you weren't able to make the live stream today, we're going to give you contact information so that if you need to reach out to us and you've got questions, feel free to do so. It's one of the hallmarks of EnviroGuard, right? The reason that we, um, the reason we're in business as a manufacturer is because we don't just manufacture the products that we talk to you about. We support those products directly. So if you need training, technical assistance, et cetera, um, use us for that and walk through jobs with us and we'll help you um, even on the estimating side of things. So with that said, let's talk about a few use cases to begin with. Now, the two that I've parsed out here, really the four are, let's deal with fire damage on its own. And then let's talk about all of the other um, ceiling instances that you're going to run into. So there's two that you need to think of when it comes to fire damage. One is, do you have alligatoring char, or the need for priming. And if so, you're going to need a product like our Vapor Lock White. You're going to need Vapor Lock White to deal with that. Now, alligatoring, I, I don't want to take for um, granted that everybody knows exactly what we're talking about. Alligatoring is when it goes a step beyond the char, and then it gets real brittle, and it literally looks like alligator scales, or it looks like a scale of some sort, right, where it's slightly raised up from the surface. Now, when we were originally doing testing, and I was in charge of actually the testing in our lab to do this, I intentionally alligatored all the surfaces of untreated two by fours um, because we wanted to test for durability of vapor lock products on the surface um, with uh, with soot. Okay, so what I mean by that is that it would have been um, easy and cheating. Um, to have alligated the surface and then to have brushed and wiped that surface clean of all debris. Now, while that's the recommendation, the reality is that, you know, it's imperfect, right? When, when you get onto a job site and you're trying to get through a job, um, you're not going to get to it all. So there's going to be some residual soot. There's going to be some residual um, flaking or the potential for flaking on that surface. And otherwise, in other words, it won't be a perfectly stable surface 100%. And I wanted to test it that way to make sure that we had the durability from vapor lock so that you wouldn't have callback issues and things like that. And so when we talk about alligatoring, vapor lock products have been tested in that scenario, real world, with the reality of what you deal with um, on a job. So that's alligator. Char is char. We all know what char is. And then priming is when you need to put down a base coat and then you might be 
um, coating over that, repainting, etc. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in just a little while. Now, the clear coat, Vapor Lock Clear, is used when there's no visual visual damage. Let me let's just take a a, um, a house fire as an example and say, hey, structurally, maybe in an attic, we needed to um, to recoat or we needed a coat with Vapor Lock White. And maybe we tinted it so it blends in um, with the structure itself, right? Like a, a tan color or something like that. But then we go into the interior of, of the home, and apart from some, some minor damage, maybe we just have embedded smoke odor. And so instead of having to prime slash seal and then recoat, the option is to use vapor lock clear over top of all of those surfaces that are finished already. What that does is it reduces the total cost and total labor time uh, on that job um, and not only allows you to stay in budget, but probably be more profitable on those types of jobs as well. So Vapor Lock Clear would be used in those cases. The same thing can hold true for structural framing that um, there, where there's no visual damage. So if you just needed um, to seal the structure. Say you were pulling all the sheetrock uh, out of a home, but you needed to seal all that structure and you were good and, and the insurance company was good with a clear sealant, then Vapor Lock Clear would be the way to go there as well. Okay, now let's get a, a, um, over, no, back to the other. I still have to handle the other two, four, uh, the, the two of the four. Um, let's talk about Smoke, and what I mean by that is smoking, whether that be cigarettes for marijuana, etc., um, pet odors, cooking odors, or any other organic odor like um, what do you call it? Um, like fuel fuel uh, odors and things like that, like fuel spills in basements. Okay, now we have vapor lock white and vapor lock clear to assist us in those two instances as well. So. The first is let's say that we do need to prime and seal at the same time. So Vapor Lock White is a one-step primer and sealer so that you do get that base of what you need so, um, for that odor sealing situation where that's just a necessity, right? You're going to overcoat or whatever, and you just need to cover up staining. You need to give yourself a fresh slate. Vapor lock white in that case is the way to go. But more than likely, you're going to run into this second situation where you want to be able to clear seal over top of surfaces, similar to what we talked about before, right? There's no visual damage, but boy, do you have, you know, a lot of odor going on in an area um, or on surfaces. That's when you would use vapor lock clear as well. I, you know, they're very similar, like fire damage versus these other odors that we're talking about. But we often get questions about, well, what about pet odor? What about cooking odors, et cetera? So we wanted to parse it out, even though it's very, very similar um, for you to look at in writing. All right, now we can move to the next slide. Let's talk about why vapor lock products are so good. Because, you know, from Canada all the way through the United States primarily, we've got rave reviews, not, not just on our website. And we not only get great reviews back from where it's used in university projects and things like that. But just in general, consumers um, talk about how good vapor lock was for solving their uh, long-term odor issues. So the first thing is that we've got to deal with vapor permeance. That's the breathability or the non-breathability of the product. When you are dealing with an odor sealant, you want it to always perform or, or um, function at less than one perm, okay? Products typically on the market that are sold for stain and odor blocking are actually made from acrylic, or you might hear the term latex, okay? Those products are breathable by chemistry, okay? So we would never recommend for odor sealing something like our max guard products or our clear guard products because they're built to be breathable they are acrylic and equivalent term to acrylic is latex okay so if you see something that is acrylic based or latex based know that that product is breathable and is not ideal for odor sealing you need a 
non-breathable product for odor sealing. So a lot of those products on the market will be something like a shellac, but the downside of a shellac-based product, while it's very good for odor sealing, is that it is, um, it is going to be flammable. It's going to be high VOC or high fuming, um, and it's going to make diff, uh, uh, cleanup very difficult. Um, oh, Ray um, asked, what is the name of the odor removal product? Sorry, uh, that is our Dutrion line, right? We've got both the uh, tabletized version of that if you're doing like small um, liquid treatments or if you wanted to do a vapor treatment where you would off-gas that into an area um, based upon cubic footage, then we would use the either the 525 uh, gram or the 2200 gram kit. So um, if you have any other questions about that, Feel free to ask, and I'll jump into that as well. But then we'll probably do a lot. Yeah, I know we'll do, be doing a live stream in the next couple of weeks having to do with everything odor removal related. We're kind of priming the pump for the for the season right now because odor is going to be an issue. People are in their homes more. There's going to be more fire damages this time of year. But, yeah, Dutrion is the product that you're looking for there. So that leads right in to the second thing. So. To finish that point up, um, instead of being latex slash acrylic based, our product is vinyl based. Okay, and vinyl just won't allow that um, that odor to bleed through, both short term and more importantly long term. Which is the second point: the product needs to be elastic for expansion and contraction. So during the summer, surfaces are going to open up and allow odor to escape. And what we noticed about shellac-based products is that they form all these little hairline um, fractures in them over about a year's period of time during expansion and contraction. And so you can get odor bleed through later on. So if you are already using something that's shellac-based, don't be surprised. Or I shouldn't say don't, don't be surprised. Like It's not unusual to get a callback or something in that scenario. And it's because those hairline fractures will form uh, in shellac-based products over time. They're just too rigid. They don't, um, they're not elastic in nature. The next thing that a lot of people complain about um, on a job is, hey, we love the performance of a shellac-based product, but boy, are the fumes heavy. With the vapor lock products, there's no fumes whatsoever. We use a VOC resin formulation in that, so that doesn't have to be a problem at all. So when it comes down to it, you're just going to be using a P100 respirator, um, and that's just to keep people from breathing the resin itself when you're spraying, because when you've got overspray, there's a little bit of resin in the air, so it's just to keep them safe, um, safeguarded from that situation, not um, from fumes. Um, and then it's water-based from Easy Cleanup. The next thing is, you know, are you do you really want to, you know, spray a product on the surface that seals the odor in, has high fumes, but then also you have to use a flammable product in order to clean it up, right? Some sort of a solvent. In the case of VaporLock, it cleans up with water because it is still water-based, even though it's a vinyl microemulsion. And then the last thing is we've included in the formula our marine grade antimicrobial. It's called an isothiazolone, and that is durable to the um, to the coating itself, uh, and it's meant to be used in moisture prone areas. So even if you get into using vapor lock in attics or crawl spaces or basements, those areas that tend to be moisture prone, um, it's okay. The, the product can handle it. Um, while it's not made for underfoot traffic. Certainly being subjected to moist environments um, is not going to be a problem because of that antimicrobial. So it will give you a nice um, benefit of um, uh, mold and moisture resistance. Okay. All right. Let's head to the next slide. All right. Let's talk a little bit about PPE. So um, I've got a couple things that I'm going to show you as we go. Um, a couple talking points here to be aware of is stuff like gloves. Now, gloves come in all varieties. This is our, our uh, Showa 4 mil glove, and it's just your standard 4 mil. And this is just fine for handling these products, right? It's just to keep the product off your skin. Um, but as we all know, with 4 mil gloves, um, the downside is that they tear easily. So I always talk about a 4 mil as being task-oriented. When we move up to products like this, so this is 
a, let me see, this is our 9 mil Showa, okay? Not only do you see that we are able to get into a nice long glove there, but this is an all-day glove. It's durable enough that you're not going to get ripping and tearing during the day. So if you want something that is going to give you durability that people aren't you know, running through these like water all day long, good one. A 9 mil glove, you'll love it. Now, the, the final step is... If you really want a washable glove, okay, I'm not trying to do a commercial here, but I kind of am, um, go to a 15 mil. This will give you probably a, a product that can last all week, right? So if you're really looking to control that budget on gloves, you might want to go to a more premium glove to have something that's washable and reusable, and a 15 mil glove will give that to you. Um, Ray asks, I have a mold remediation project coming up. What would you recommend? It's for a crawl space only. So there, um, <laughs> I think we might have to dive into another conversation um, because I'm not sure if you're asking about the um, the actual remediation where we'd be talking about everything from Dutreon, where you have you know a um, level one soil load base, right? So very low soil level, all the way up through a level four where you've got high staining um, and high soil load levels. So we could be talking about Everything from um, the use of just Dutreon for, for basically a wipe down in that scenario with one minute dwell times all the way through React Extract. So I'd want to jump a little bit more into that with you, Ray. And then the other side of it would be the mold and moisture control side. Um, <clears throat> if you're in a crawl space, you want something that's going to manage moisture as well as mold. Um, a clear guard or a max guard are going to be the way to go, depending upon if you want to brighten up that space. Um, with MaxGuard, or if you just want something that's very neutral and is going to allow that environment to look like it all always has, that would be the ClearGuard um, product. Okay, so uh, you said it's a level four. In that case, I would go React Extract. So um, your OxyPrep is going to be your stain mitigant, but it's also going to um, be the product that reacts with uh, OxyPar. So about two minutes apart between OxyPrep and OxyPar, you'll get that reaction between the two products. It'll pull that soil load to the surface for either wipe down or wet vacuum extraction. Um, and it'll save you a ton of labor time in doing so. If you want a tutorial on that, not only do we have a great step-by-step -step guide to be able to kind of act as a checklist for all your folks, um, but in addition to that, we do have a really good video outlining that. And if you want to see it kind of in action with the BTM system, we also have a BTM sprayer video that not only takes you through like the maintenance and care of the system itself, but it, it does a lot in showing you exactly how it's used. And I think visually you can get the idea of, wow, if you move from something that um, is manual to something that is electric, it can save you a ton of time on the job. And you can do about twice to three times the number of jobs in a week if you're really you know, selling um, a lot of service. Um, Greg asks, can VaporLock be used as a stain blocker? Yes, um, VaporLock White is the stain blocker. And we have a great step-by-step -step training video on, um, on VaporLock where you can see it, both VaporLock Clear and VaporLock uh, White being used on all surfaces. And we show it going, being sprayed right on a um, severely burnt, charred, and alligator OSB surface, um, you'll be able to see for yourself how well that works in stain blocking. At 10 wet mills, which is about 160 square feet per gallon, you're going to get awesome um, stain coverage. That's about 800 feet per gallon. I hope, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 800 feet per five gallon pail. Um, but again, we're here if you need us. So um, feel free to give us a call. Maybe. Um, Grace, if you would list our phone number, um, it's 828-548-3900. And feel free to give us a call. I'll be happy to walk through these things with you and make sure that you get pointed to, you know, the, the videos, step-by-step, um, -step, step guides, anything like that that you might need. So getting back to a little bit of protection. Um, also, if you just want a suit that's going to keep you clean, the ANSI suit, our least expensive suit, is just fine for that. The, the nice thing about our ANSI suit is that we have that in a non-footed version. So if you're in a crawl space or in an area where you need traction, but you want to be able to take 
um, put boots on and take those off. The reason we've um, we've specified this suit bootless is so that you can go in and out of offices, homes, things of that nature. But that'll give you um, enough durability to keep any of the VaporLock product off of your um, off your clothing. Eye protection. Would you hand me one of our goggles over there, Grace? Grace is on the other side. And if you saw that video that we started out today, she fully, um, so normally I do a lot of writing um, for our video scripting. She scripted and produced that entire video herself. She's only been here for, um, what, 90 days now, Grace? Yes, thank you. Um, these goggles that we are co uh, that we're now carrying are great. So if you just need a goggle, let me show you what this looks like, that is going to give you protection um, around the eyes, like you know, seal and conform to your face. Um, that's all that you need when you're using vapor lock products. So it's a great goggle for that. Um, and then from a respiratory standpoint, you just need a P100. I don't need a full face, but thank you. Um, you just need a P100. Now those come in two different forms. Um, you can get the pan, the pancake, but the pancake gets clogged easily. So if you have that overspray, that's no good. You want the cartridge. The co the cartridge is on our website. Maybe Grace could shoot a um, a link to that cartridge so you can see that. When it comes to um, use of coatings anytime, um, a cartridge is going to be better for you because it's not going to get caked. The, the pancake is not going to get caked with coating, thereby diminishing um, its longevity and the ability to breathe through it. You want a cartridge um, for that. Um, so let me just keep up with this here. Ray asked, um, do vapor, does vapor lock come in gray? We can certainly tint it for you or you can have it tinted. So we'll work with you on that. So if you, if you said, Hey, we've got this job coming up, can you, you know, tint a, a small batch for us? Probably yes. Okay. Um, we did that. We started that out. Um, oh gosh, with a, with a customer in Memphis, where we took uh, MaxGuard and we went to a uh, almost black but not quite specification for like commercial ceilings, and it became um, called um, uh, black, MaxGuard Blackout. Um, that's how that product was developed. So if you need something like that, let us let us know. So you can see that link right there. If you want that um, P100 cartridge that lasts a lot longer than the pancakes, there's not that much difference in price, um, but I would recommend that. Okay, um, let's talk. Okay, so we talked about respiratory. Let's go on to our next section. Okay, equipment. So vapor lock products can certainly be applied with hand tools. And if you're in a small area, that might be the way to go, right? But if you are in, um, if you're dealing with joists or, you know, large flat walls, anything that is, is medium to large in terms of size, an airless sprayer is the way to go. And we're going to walk through that a little bit today because um, I want you to be thinking in terms of like tip sizes and, you know, how to make sure that you're using an airless sprayer uh, properly in the first place. And we're going to go into some numbers and things um, to get that straight and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so an airless paint sprayer is the way to go. And remember, when we're on the cleaning and surface prep side of things, we're always working low pressure. When we go to a coating or a sealant, pressure is your friend, okay? And there's nothing in these products that's going to um, reduce the longevity of, um, of your sprayer. So go with an airless paint sprayer. It's going to allow you to get the coverage that you need quickly enough, and um, it's going to give you the control from a tip perspective, okay? Now, we do have a great tutorial in the training video, and I hate to keep asking this of you, but any chance you could find a the Vapor Lock training video on our YouTube channel and post that link? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Grace is gonna find that, uh, that link to the Vapor Lock um, training video. You know, we did that video a couple years ago, and I've gotta say, it holds up. It is so good. Um, at going through all the detail that we're covering today and more. Um, so when it comes to tip sizing, I almost don't want to talk about it except for how tips are sized. So let's do that. And then we go into exceptional detail. It's just like a seven or eight minute video, but we did a really good job scripting it so the detail and the visuals really come together on it. 
Um, okay, so a tip size. You, let's start with a, a typical tip that you would see just out of like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, and that is a 515 tip, okay? The, you've got two different numbers to think about in there. You've got the five and you've got the 15, okay? The five is going to tell you how wide your spray pattern is about 12 inches from the surface. So the five times two tells us you're going to have about a 10 inch wide spray pattern at 12 inches from the surface. The 15 means 15 one hundredths of an inch. So that is the orifice size or how much product you're delivering to the surface. So when if, if we're talking together and going through these details and you say, hey, Mark, what would you use for vapor lock white? I'm trying to shoot, you know, joy space or something like that. The first thing I would say is, OK, in those joy space, we don't want to make too many passes. Right. Let's make sure that we've got something where in two passes we can get the coverage that we need. Um, and you're not going to have a lot of um, need to reverse that tip and unclog if you've ever worked with an air, airless sprayer. If you go a little too small, you might have great control, but it's at the expense of sometimes having to reverse that tip out too much. So I'm probably going to say, OK, let's go with something that's like a, a, a 619. That means that we are going to get 12 inches wide, 12 inches from the surface, and we're going to deliver enough product so that you get, you know, eight to 10 wet mills on that surface it can, and can move quickly through that job. So if you had to spray out an entire, you know, 1500 square foot crawl space or something like that, because maybe there was a fire um, in that crawl space or maybe more likely an attic, um, you could get through that easily within a couple hours and, you know, move on to the next job. OK, um, likewise. By the way, you can get tips that really give you huge amounts of coverage area. You could get a 1219 tip, okay? And in that case, you're covering 24 inches at just 12 inches from the surface. But that might be too much. Now, if you're on a big wide wall where it's just flat surface, that might be the way to go, especially if you're applying something like Vapor Lock Clear and you're going to back roll it anyway, right? You just need to get it quickly on the surface and keep moving. It's a great way, you know, a great option to at least know about. Um, so just kind of keep those things in mind. But I would say go to that YouTube video and check out the additional detail on that. Um, it'll really help you and it'll get you through that information quickly. Feel free to share it with your folks as well. Um, it'll answer a lot of questions that they might have. All right, we're ready for the next slide. Okay, assessment. So we do have two, um, two guides that I would refer you to. One is the odor assessment guide. So in that assessment guide, it's that's going to walk you through asking the right questions of your customer because when it comes down to it, the, the, one of the issues that I see people have is that they will talk about odor as if it was one service, right? As if it weren't potentially cleaning or vapor treating or even sealing. Um, and it can come from various areas, right? We can, when we're talking odor, it could be coming from um, everything from textiles and soft surfaces to hard surfaces to HVAC and then, you know, structural surfaces, surfaces as well. So we've got to deal with all of those. And one thing that the assessment guide does is it begins to teach the customer through a series of questions that this may or may not be a, a simple process and a fast process, i.e. an inexpensive process based upon their feedback. But once you've gone through those questions and then you've refined that with the assessment guide before you go um, and build the accomplished list and get into the inspection, um, once you've done that, you've set the right tone for the customer. So I would say, like, if you really want to, you know, if you will, use your relationship with us to the maximum, um, start getting involved in the odor assessment guides, in the inspection and accomplish lists. Um, we'll help put, you know, put your sales process together with you. Um, and we'll also probably invite you into Market Makers. Our Market Makers is our best practices um, group that meets twice a year here. Um, and next in, in uh, spring, March 2023, we're going to do a certification course on the front side of our two-day Market Makers so you can get certification. Um, and I'm not going to talk right now about what that certification is yet, but it's a full day certification um, full of 
uh, hands-on training, practice for all your people, as well as necessary testing so you know that they're competent through all of their field and application, marketing plan, marketing planning, um, and sales skills, okay? So certification we're really excited about for 2023. Um, and we're going to have a website that you can go to for each and every certification. But we are going to have a certification on the front side of our standard two-day market makers. Um, and market makers is all about us getting together and talking best practices, leadership. It's a phenomenal time um, and phenomenal relationships nationwide. So um, just a little plug for that. But Back to the assessment guide. An assessment guide is great for not only getting the right information, but setting the right tone with your customer where they go, oh, this is the comp consummate professional who I want to do business with. All right, we're ready for the next slide. So surface preparation. As with anything, surface prep is the most important part of sealing and coating a surface, right? You've got to have a clean surface and you might want to have an odor free or virtually odor free surface to give you the best, um, well, let's, let's say what it is, right? We want Google reviews, right? You want great reviews from your customer because your reviews, especially when you're in services, are can be the lifeblood of someone selecting you or passing you over for service. And so we, you know, provide all the products to make sure that it happens. So when it comes to surface preparation, um, you've got to think not in, only in terms of the products that you're going to use, but how you're going to use those and how efficient they're going to be in delivering the results that you're looking for. For example, odor removal and cleaning can happen in one step, right? Um, if you're not to a point yet in your in your business where you're ready for an electric sprayer like the BTM system, you might want to you know select something like our heavy duty pump up sprayer coupled with our Premier system so that you can quickly do wipe downs and, and things of that nature. And if you need more information on that, um, maybe we can provide a couple links for you in here so that you can kind of check out those systems for yourself. And again, we can answer questions for you and help you get dialed in because if there's one thing that I, I see folks doing um, a lot is that they're kind of shortcutting themselves by using really cheap tools where the tools are the things that allow you to profit the most in a, in a job. And if you're using um, pump up sprayers that give you like erratic um, or sporadic spraying and you don't have like just great control and able to switch in and out of, of different tip sizes quickly and replace parts when, when something breaks, if you're in that scenario, you at least need to have a, a, a heavy-duty pump sprayer or several of those in your arsenal um, so that you're efficient and effective on the job. And um, uh, Grace is, is providing some links just in case you need to check any of that out. So you can combine together your cleaning and your odor removal. In other words, like something like Grease Gobbler and Dutrion, or we've got a new product coming out that is called Code Orange that we're going to be talking about in just a couple of weeks um, for um, oily substances like soot and things like that. So um, if that's you, if you want to really get um, efficient on your cleaning and odor removal, um, you can combine those processes together. And we're glad to walk you through exactly how to do that. All right, let's go to the next slide. So um, let's talk about preparing your sprayer. So if you've got a, um, an airless sprayer, the first thing that you want to do is you want to mix your vapor lock. You don't do it for any other reason than it breaks the surface tension of vapor lock so that it pulls or primes your, your sprayer system very easily. Okay. So even if you open up a bucket of vapor lock and it looks perfect and you go, that doesn't look like it needs to be mixed at all. Believe me, mix it, even if it's for 15, 20 seconds, and it'll break that surface tension and you won't have any problem priming the system. Now, the next thing that you want to do is if your system was put away, whether it was put away wet or it was put away where you um, had your um, pump fluid in there, you want to purge the water in the system first, right? So make sure you go through that process of purging your system first before you prime it with um with vapor lock okay so those are two separate steps so mix it purge the water and or the pump fluid in the system and then you're going to move into priming your system now 
when you're priming the system, once it's primed, there's probably two possibilities, and this is going to require a test. If when you start spraying, and, and again, this video does a great job of showing this, okay? When you start spraying to test, and I always recommend testing before you, know, before you start the job, if you see a split pattern begin to form, or maybe you've got two heavy streams out to the side, maybe even a, a heavy stream down the center, that is a split pattern, and that means that your pressure is too low. On the other side of that, if you see fogging occurring, right, then your pressure is too high. And it allows you just to know whether you need to adjust that pressure up or down. Some people will put on their labels and things a specific pressure that you want to dial into. You know, depending upon the day, the temperature, the product that you're using, whether it's vapor lock clear, vapor lock white, and the system that you're using, the sprayer you're using in and of itself, and the tips that you're using, all of that's going to change. When you're testing, intentionally form a split pattern to begin with. Over adjust to a fogging pattern. And then come back to center, and you'll know that you're well adjusted for that job, right? All right. So that comes to your adjust and retest. And then once you do all of that, then test your wet film thickness for coverage. Know what you're after. For example, do you need something that's more of an aesthetic treatment? Give me a second here. Okay. If you do, right? If if and what I'm saying there is like if you want to to make sure you've got a pure white surface. And let's say that we're going on to concrete block, okay? Well, you might wanna do a little square to begin with and figure out exactly how much wet film um, thickness you need in, uh, in order to get the coverage you're looking for on that block, right? So if you, you shoot a square, maybe it's four feet by four feet, and you go, that looks perfect then test it with a wet film thickness gauge. And if you need some, let us know about that. We're happy to, to share some wet film thickness gauges with you. And that just measures how thick that coating is going to be. When we measure that, let's say that you come up with, um, for easy numbers, 10 wet mills. And you go, man, 10 wet mills is perfect on the surface for what I'm trying to accomplish. Take that number and divide it into 1,600. That's going to tell you that you're going to have 160 square feet per gallon. Now you know exactly what your use is going to be on that surface. Again, the video that I keep referring to is going to go through all of this detail as well and reiterate that. So feel free to use that video over and over again, or you know, for that matter, maybe this one sometimes as well, um, with your team to really get dialed in on your coverage rates, okay, and wet film thickness. We actually have a really great article on our blog that we that um, was written about. Um, the reason for wet film thickness, determining your costs, making sure that you're profitable on a job. Um, so we do on our blog have a uh, have a document dedicated to just understanding the importance of wet film thickness. All right, we can go to the next slide. Okay, let's talk about a couple different protocols that you might be confronted with. So the first one is what if you just need to odor seal alone and you're just like top coating um, an existing surface, like a, a painted surface, or you're just sealing um, structure um, like, you know, lumber, OSB, concrete, but you don't have you know, the need to really um, do any uh, stain sealing or anything like that or priming. Okay. In that case, you're dealing with a single coat application. And your, your product, whether it's Vapor Lock Clear or Vapor Lock White, is going to yield you somewhere between 200 to 250 feet per gallon. That is six to eight wet mills on the surface, okay? And if you start getting familiar with wet film thickness, using a wet film thickness gauge, and this you know recommendation of 200 to 250 feet per gallon, and later on, I'm going to dial this into some costs. So you can kind of be thinking about that as well and the wide variance between each of these in terms of range. Then you can go, I know that I'm going to be profitable on each and every job. Okay. And if you're working um, on an insurance-based job and your surface changes, you've got a defensible position on why you're charging more per square foot um, because some of these Xactimate codes they just are a code just for, you know, let's say it's for, you know, it's like the PNTS wall um, code or something like that where you're dealing with um, uh, uh, like joy space. I think that's joy space. That might be, I can't remember. We'll get to it. But when we get there, I'll point it out to you. Well, what happens if 
Um, you've got, you know, a joist bay, but on the other side of that is concrete or something like that. You're going to use more product on that. So I want to show you how to be, you know, working through all of these costs and then, you know, compare it over to the Xactimate coding side of things so you can kind of balance one against the other. But the most important thing is you got to be profitable on these jobs and we want to help you dial into being profitable and know your cost on each and every one. OK, so odor sealing alone, top coating and structural sealing, one coat application, 200 to 250 feet per gallon, six to eight wet mills. Our next example is going to be priming and or stain blocking plus odor sealing. And again, this is finished surfaces and structural surfaces. So drywall, painted walls, lumber, OSB, concrete, things like that. Again, this can be a single coat application, but now you're looking for that stain blocking um, capability, right? You're looking for that opacity. And when that's the case, you're going to be in a range of 150 to 200 feet per gallon. And what that's going to mean in your wet film thickness is 8 to 10 wet mills, okay? So 150 to 200 square 200 square feet per gallon, 8 to 10 wet mills. And again, we're going to dial this into cost in just a minute here. Now let's go to the next one. Now, if you've got irregular and porous surfaces like bricks, cinder block, things like that, they're going to really absorb it, right? This is where cost becomes, you really have to be dialed into your cost and the surface to make sure you're profitable on this job. You're only going to be getting 100 to 150 square feet per gallon. That's 11 to 16 wet mills. And when that happens, you're going to notice um, that you're going to need to do that as two coats. Why? Because once you get beyond about 10 wet mills, you begin to get what's called sag. And that is when the product um, from the weight of itself begins to run from the surface, right? Um, on Vaporlock White, it's going to be a, a, a thicker product than Vaporlock Clear. Um, so you may be able to push the boundaries of this with Vaporlock White, but with Vaporlock Clear, you're definitely going to need two coats. And there may be another reason for intentionally always doing two coats on irregular and poor surfaces. And that is if you've ever sprayed a poor surface, let's take um, cinder block, for example, you know that when you move vertically, um, you get a certain amount of coverage. And then when you move horizontally, which is called half hatching, right, you you will seal the rest of those pores in the surface. And so when you are doing a two coat system, I would really recommend, especially on these irregular and poor surfaces that you coat in one direction to begin with, with a 50% overlap as you go, let that stand for about two hours, right? So it is dry to the touch, come back and recoat in the opposite direction. So when you're working with your team, you might coat vertically to begin with, okay? And again, we're talking about normally these surfaces are going to be vertical in orientation. It's going to be block, brick, you know, those sorts of things that are like walls, okay? So coat first vertically. It doesn't really matter, but give your team the instruction to coat first in one direction and then coat in the other direction, always with a 50% overlap as you go. And you are going to end up with a beautifully finished surface that your customer can't complain about, okay? Um, so um, I think that's all we need to say on the irregular and poor surfaces. But if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them. All right, next slide. All right, um, so basic application methods. First of all, when you are spraying a surface, always spray straight on, okay? So move your body with your sprayer as opposed to what's called tailing off where you are keep you know staying in, in one position and you're you know gradually moving further from the surface as you go. When you when we're talking about 12 inches from the surface, that spray um, method looks like this across the body. And for me, that might be four feet maximum that I can go. Same thing vertically, right? I can only go kind of like think about karate kid wax on, wax off, right, right when you're painting the fence or whatever. Um, you all you can do is move your wrist, right, with that in each direction. You can't go any further than that. So make sure that you instruct your, your technicians or that, you, you know, you're watching that video that I keep referring to to keep them from tailing off as they spray. A, sp a spray application should not look irregular. It should begin 
right? Where you actuate your, your spray handle. And by the time you get to the end, you release, okay? You want to release that spray handle as soon as you get to the end of that motion. If I can, so end, release, back to the beginning, right? <laughs> Over here, spray, 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 release, okay? It should look like that on each and every stroke that you take with an airless sprayer. You will avoid tailing off and you will avoid, I, I've seen videos that people have sent us of them going like just like this and they never release anything and it's totally chaos when it comes to what that product looks like on the surface and that becomes meaningful when it comes to quality control controlling your costs all those sorts of things so use these steps and use these um uh, tips if you will in making sure that you are dialed into your costs and the only way that you can be is if you're using the right technique as well now um, and then we've talked about this before, apply 10 to 12 inches from the surface so that you're getting the right yield out of your tips. The next thing is back rolling. If you are going to be applying to a finished surface, such as drywall, um, where you're applying as an initial prime uh, coat as well as sealant, or if you're top coating where you're applying um, vapor lock clear over an existing paint or something like that, always back roll it. OK, and what we mean by that is you'll apply it first with your airless sprayer and then you'll go right behind it with a roller and that will give you a very nice finish uh, across all of those surfaces. OK, if you don't, um, you will get a little bit of dripping and running and it'll never look crystal clear. OK, um, so always back roll your finished surfaces, whether it's on the priming side with the white or whether it's on the um, top coating side with the uh, vapor lock clear. All right, next slide. Okay, let's talk a little bit about cleaning up the airless sprayer. First of all, anything that you haven't used, just return it back to the original container and cap it. Okay, nothing wrong with with uh, you know uh, with that as long as you don't have you're not tra um, trailing that with water, right? You don't want to be spraying water into the product, but just return it back to the original container. Once you've done that, now you want to circulate water through your system. In other words, prime your system, but now with water, okay? Then rinse it all the way through your pumps, hose, and gun, and then finally circulate your pump fluid before storage so that you don't get any uh, corrosion in the system. All right, next slide. Now, let's look at a couple different Xactimate codes that you might want to be familiar with. The first one is ceiling floors or ceiling joists. That code is PNT JST. This, and I'm just using the exact words that Xactimate uses paint with latex based stain blocker. Okay. That's PNT S. Your selector code is S on that one. These are all category PNTs, um, but your selector code is S. If you're going to seal and prime, then paint with two coats, that's PNT SP. And if you're going to seal stud wall for odor control, that's PNT S wall. That was the one that I was referring to before. But again, make sure that you are working this against the, the costs and the type of surfaces that you're applying to so that if you know, you're working with an adjuster or something like that and they need to understand why you're coming up with a certain charge, you can defend that position with the type of substrate that you're applying to, et cetera. All right, next slide. All right, so let's look at the um, the baseline cost of both of these products. VaporLock White is $48 per gallon. VaporLock Clear is $39 per gallon. And at 250 square feet, VaporLock White is going to give you 19 cents of cost per foot, whereas VaporLock Clear is at 16 cents. If you're applying this product at 100 square feet per gallon or either of these products, the cost is going to be 48 cents per foot or 39 cents per foot. So that's why it's so important to know and test the surfaces that you're working on because there's a vast difference between 250 square feet application rate, right? Um, and 100 square feet per gallon application rate, okay? So just be aware of that. Think about that in terms of, of your Xactimate codes. Balance those two things out and know what your position is going to be um, if you are in a situation where you are working with an insurance adjuster. All right, next slide. All right, so we would love to hear back from you in terms of what your needs are because um, sometimes 
you might want some email content and imagery to go along with this so that you can explain to your customers um, why you use VaporLock products, or you might need some web content to do the same. Um, we've got a recipe card there. We, I'm sure we'll have a, a recipe card that will be instructions, you know, baseline instructions from things like this that your team can use in the field with a QR code um, to make sure that they're on point in using VaporLock Clear and White. Um, education sheets. Do you need some sort of a sheet? Um, to walk your customers through things when you're setting, you know, sitting down with them, explain why you use a premium product like um, VaporLock, um, so they never have problems. Do you need captions, uh, static social media ads, and things like that to to advertise and to differentiate your services, or do you need something like a short promotional video to talk about, you know, your superior services using VaporLock? If you do. Let us know about that at support at EnviroGuardDirect.com, and we will be happy to sit down for a, a short uh, session with you um, by web. You don't have to travel or anything to see us. Um, we'll do all that. We'll make notes together, and we'll come up with a strategy for making sure that you've got the tools and materials to make VaporLock a successful part of your odor removal and, and odor sealing surf, uh, services. I always get those two services and surfaces mixed up. Um, last slide, maybe? Next Friday. Okay, so on Sunday, I am heading to Nashville. Then I'm heading to Evansville, Indiana. I will be in Louisville, Kentucky. I will be in Cincinnati next week, and I will also be in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, if you're in those areas and you've seen this, give me a shout. Let me know that um, that you're there and that you want me to stop by and say, hey. Um, but I had a, a, a thought because we're not going to be able to like produce another you know, full round of stuff like we did this week for VaporLock. Plus, I want to stay on this topic. We're, we're coming into the season of odor and odor sealing and everything. So I want to stay on this topic of odor sealing for a couple of weeks. So next Friday, I'm going to do something I've never done before. And it's going to be like me on the spot without any notes or anything. And I want to walk you through, if I see 20 to 25 companies in a week, right? There's always like gold that comes out of these meetings. So there's gonna, I'm gonna have field notes. I'm gonna, we're gonna be talking about best practices, and there's, we're gonna be up against challenges and solutions. I can think of one right now. I'm gonna be on a mold job um, next Tuesday up in Evansville. It's this big um, corporate retreat that's like a big log cabin, and I just have the feeling that we're gonna put together some procedures and some product use instructions that are probably going to end up on video as well, and that we're going to document that because we're working on finished, all finished surfaces, it's going to be like, it's all timber, right? We're going to come up with some really good best practices so that when you're in that situation, you see something similar, we're going to have some best practices coming out of that that I can share with you and maybe even in, even show some images of some before and afters or maybe some video. Who knows what's going to happen? But next Friday, I'm going to come back out of the field after being out for you know four or five days with all kinds of good information. And I'm going to share it with you on the spot, raw and live here from EnviroGuard. So anyway, thanks for your uh, time today, your attention to things. And uh, and if you do have any questions, again, our number is 828-548-3900. If you need to get in touch with us to begin crafting the support materials and things that you need to take your business to the next level, that email address is support at EnviroGuardDirect.com. Um, have a great week, everybody. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving, by the way. We had a great Thanksgiving here. And, um, and maybe it's early to be wishing it, but happy holidays, everybody. We're in that festive time of year where uh you know these next this next month is a is a joyous time to be celebrating with friends family meeting friends and family hopefully not talking too much politics um but uh we will see you next friday uh when i'm back from the southern midwest if that's a thing we'll see you then take care <laughs>